This is Dr. Alan Josephson. So that's where I go every morning. Not anymore. He's visiting the University of Louisville Hospital campus, his former employer where he was demoted, harassed for a year, then effectively fired. Any thoughts when you're strolling through this oh, area? Oh, uh, a lot of good moments with faculty, students. Under his leadership, he rebuilt a struggling program into one of the nation's premier child and adolescent psychiatry divisions. But a lot of mixed feelings for sure with the way things ended here. Josephson was removed from his position here, not because of job performance, which supervisors repeatedly reviewed as exemplary, but because of something he said, something unpopular. Here he is in the fall of 2017. I have a commitment to the idea that parents, children need help. Taking part in a panel discussion at the Heritage Foundation. The topic, treatment approaches for children experiencing gender dysphoria. And I'm also here because I think truth matters. This appearance would destroy Josephson's respected 35-year academic and medical career. How so? Dr. Josephson, a child and adolescent psychiatrist, questioned the common treatment plan for children confused about their gender, which is... Begin to put them on a track toward surgery. Put them on uh, extensive hormone treatments, puberty blocking hormones, cross-sex hormones. One treatment type, aggressively change a child's gender. There, there are statements being made now by many clinicians that we determine male and female um, not by genetics, or by physical observations, or by hormones. So we've replaced the facts of existence, biological existence, with, with a feeling. I feel like I'm male or female. He shared these insights off campus, not as a representative of the university, but to a nationally known think tank, the Heritage Foundation. He simply raised the very common sense notions that we should explore what's going on in the child's life, what sort of psychiatric issues the child might be facing, before we undertake any further, more aggressive medical treatment. An unpopular message to a conservative group. Weeks later, Josephson was demoted. Over the next year, he was subjected to a hostile work environment, given demeaning assignments. And in 2019, his contract wasn't renewed. It's easy to connect the dots. So for three consecutive years, 2014, 2015, 2016, Dr. Josephson received perfect marks on his annual evaluation. In other words, he was an excellent, a superlative leader of the division. Then, in the fall of 2017, everything changed. There's a lot of misinformation that leads to the uh, discussion of science of gender identity, and uh, this is a real problem. Dr. Josephson's approach is comprehensive, grounded in science, and he's a voice for the well-being of parents and children and an advocate for the scientific method. The uh, inherent bias in many of the people doing this work uh, is more of an activist nature rather than scientific nature. And those are some major concerns that, that many of us have about the kind of studies. And others share Josephson's concerns. I was excited that there was somebody from the medical community that was from the psychiatric and psychological component that really had this down, just as I had found out in my own research work. He had it right. This is Walt Heyer. I was lost in the world that had collapsed around me because there wasn't an Alan Josephson there to tell me, you don't need hormones. You don't need to change your gender. And today, I work, I've literally worked with hundreds, even thousands of individuals who tell the same story that I have, where their life has been torn apart because someone told them they needed hormone therapy and gender reassignment surgery. Following Dr. Josephson's dismissal, ADF filed a lawsuit against the university. Professors should not fear for their career simply because they hold differing views. Professors should not fear for their jobs simply because they speak to a conservative group or simply because they express views that the administration doesn't like. Universities are supposed to be a marketplace of ideas, not an assembly line for one type of thought. Anytime somebody speaks out and then you stifle their speech, don't allow them to speak freely, and then terminate them because they do, there's nothing more unfair than that. And he should have been allowed, in my view, to go head to head with the people at the university and have an open discussion, but they don't want that. 
They just want to silence the people they don't agree with. But as an academic, it's even more important because that is how we do our work. Uh, that's how we study, that's how we think, we interact, we challenge, we question. Uh, and to be in a situation where one can't do that or is told you cannot think that, you cannot say that, uh, is a death knell really for academic work.